Hey guys, welcome back to Mummy Cooks Homemade, and this is what we eat in a week. So where do we start? Oh, this was a shrimp and chorizo risotto. It was spicy, and Steve really liked this one. Easy pizza and wedges. Pepperoni pizza and homemade wedges. Pork tonkatsu. There was already a video for this. Let me know if you need it linked. And rice, obviously. Melty cheese. Yummy. Then we had jacket potato. Some ham that was left from Christmas that I defrosted out the freezer. And rabbit food. This was the squid recipe I put out on Sunday, I think it was. Um, you don't have to use squid. You could use pork steaks. You could use chicken, a piece of salmon. Um, we had it with this rice, and the Spanish rice, which was absolutely gorgeous, by the way. I would eat that on its own. And salad. Then we had homemade fish and chips with mushy peas. And then comes Sunday. So that's a kilo of pork mince I'm chucking in there. It's 90% defrosted. I'm using the sea of function on my multi cooker. Less pans to mess up. You can chuck whatever you like. Whatever you like, chuck it in. So I've just chucked one onion in, small diced. Well, medium diced. I'm going to chuck in some celery and carrots chopped to the same size as well and chop them up and then throw those in i've just used a couple of stalks if you don't like celery don't put it in these recipes are just a guide just to give you an idea you could put in what you like so like i say carrots as well about the same size chuck it all in You do this in a regular pan. So I'm just cooking this. I basically just left it to cook away until all the meat is about cooked through. I'm going to use 300 grams of mushrooms, just going to slice them. I did a couple and then Amy wanted to do the rest. That's why you see the little knife there. That's the knife I used. So I put in some Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to add in mixed herbs, garlic and celery salt. Two tins of baked beans. Don't knock it till you tried it, honestly. It makes it creamy. So you could make up some um, beef stock here and then just thicken it later with the cornstarch slurry or you could use some packet mixes it's entirely up to you what you want to do here I used three of the Coleman's um, cottage pie mixes because it's such a big batch it's a kilo of meat gotta have a pudding so I need 24 of these cookies this is a chocolate and ginger tart and it was ready in about 10 minutes. If you like stuff like this and you're a chocoholic and you want something that's fast, highly recommend this. So I did count out 24 and there happened to be four left so the kids dived on them. You can use a processor to process these into crumbs. I just don't bother. It doesn't take long doing it this way. I'll put the exact measurements for this in the description. So I crush this up, as you can see, and then I add some melted butter to it. And I press it into my little flan tin. Which reminds me, I need to order one that's slightly bigger. Just reminded myself. So I mix this in really well. Put it into the tin, use the back of the spoon to press it into the tin. And up the sides. And then popped it into the refrigerator while I made the topping. 
which was four ingredients and it took next to no time. So just work it up the sides of the tin there. Once I've got enough into, into place, then I'll start really pressing it into the tin like that. When you're eating this, you'd think you spent hours on it, but it's so fast. That's it. You could bake this for five to six minutes if you wanted to. I just put mine into the fridge to set up. So I've got dark chocolate and milk chocolate, equal amounts. As I say, the recipe will be below. Now I'm measuring out how much cream I need. These pots are meant to hold 300 mils. Look at that. And there's next to nothing left in there. So I mean, these pots hold nothing near what they say they do. So that's double cream or heavy cream. And I'm adding a little bit of butter into there. I heated mine in the microwave, you can do it in a pan. And while that's heating up in the microwave, I've got some stem, stem ginger and I'm just snipping it into the chocolate. I only used two out of three of these bowls and I used some of the syrup. No set amount, I just poured some in. And my Amy had, had some of this and she actually liked it, I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. Obviously. Obviously, father-in-law didn't have this. <laughs> so there's the cream and butter mixture. Just pour it all over the chocolate. Leave it to stand for a minute or two. And then mix it in. And that will be your ginger and chocolate ganache. So I left it for a minute or two. Splashing it everywhere. Giving it a good mix up. It will mix up. Give it a minute. Chocolatey goodness. This is my type of pudding. So you can see it's all mixing in now. And there was no work to that whatsoever. <laughs> I just microwaved the milk. That's not lumpy. Remember, it's got them real thin ginger slices in there. As easy as that, pour it into the tin. And I pop that into the fridge to set up, which took about an hour and a half. That's been cooking away on the high function on slow cook. So now I'm making the rice pudding. So I've got some pudding rice next to me. You can see at the bottom. So it's a whole pint of milk, 50 grams of pudding rice, 53, <laughs> a little bit of sugar. It weren't much. I think it was about 25 grams, something like that. <laughs> yep, 30 grams. Then I put in some raisins and a touch of maple syrup. And I just covered this with foil. A couple of knobs of butter on top, cover it with foil. And pop it into the oven on gas mark four. And it was in there for two hours, I think. So I'm making sure this is not too soggy. I'm using a slotted spoon to take the meat out. I will save the gravy. We did also, I mean, there's vegetables in this, but we did also have Brussels sprouts and green beans on the side with Yorkshire pudding, because I had some in the freezer. This multi cook is so light, you can just pick it up and empty it. <laughs> It's not heavy like a slow cooker. 
and we had some little square mini roasts with it as well. So I'm just topping it with some mashed potato now. This is not a super thick layer of mashed potato either. So when I did my mash, I put in butter and milk. You can add cream, whatever you want really into it that you like to have in your mashed potatoes. So you'll see once this is spread out, it's not a super thick layer. It just covers it. And then I cover the mashed potato with a layer of cheese. So I've got it on a baking tray because this will bubble out the sides of the uh, roasting dish. So I, I would recommend putting it on a on a baking sheet or something to catch that gravy. Many times I haven't, many times I regretted it. It's just such an easy meal really to be honest. But not one that we've had for a little bit so I thought why not? A bit parsley. And Bob's your uncle. So the tart is ready. So I'm taking crystallized ginger this time. Whole pieces and just slice them into really thin slithers. Just to top the tart. I had a piece of this late last night. Yummy. You saw how quick it was. Not a difficult pudding to make at all. We're not going for, going for perfection here guys. We're just going for make it presentable. Mother-in-law enjoyed this as well. Steve had the rice, baked rice pudding with his dad. They were both stuffed yesterday though. Poor fellas. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It was as easy as that. There is the pie out of the oven. See what I mean about it bubbling over. The rice pudding is done. It's got the looks like a toffee colour because it's got the maple syrup and the sort of raisins in there. And that was it dished up. Yummy in my tummy. But it was all stuffed. <laughs> Never looks pretty once it's all cooked. That's why I took a picture of it while it was come straight out the oven. Amy said, can I have a tiny, tiny drop of cream? <laughs> That's all she wanted. And yeah, she ate that. The rice pud, nice and thick. No runny rice pudding. And there we are. That's what we had this week. Thanks so much for watching, guys. There will be a haul on Wednesday from Sainsbury's. And the dreaded cupboard clear out. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.